Yo, yo, YouTube, what's up with your boy, Sports and Fitness Rants? I'm back, guys. Click that like button. Subscribe to my channel. What's up, y'all? Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. Got another great video for you guys today. As usual, you guys know the deal on this channel. It's all about the facts on this channel. It's all about the truth. It's all about stopping the narratives, setting the record straight. And I want to thank all you guys out there. Much respect to all you guys out there, man. Everyone across the world, everyone across the states has been supporting my channel. It really means a lot to me, guys. You guys commenting, you know, watching my videos. It, it's really humbling, guys. I do not say that just to say it. It means a lot. So thank you to everyone out there that's been supporting my channel. It really means a lot. And in this video, we're going to speak about how LeBron James is not one of the most clutch players in NBA's history. We're going to talk about that in this video because a lot of people keep trying to pump LeBron up as like the number two or a top three most clutch player in NBA history. And I'm, I'm not buying this, man. I'm not, guys. We're going to talk about it in this video. And you guys know what to do. Turn the volume all the way up. Hit that play button. Remember, these videos are for educational purposes. And let's roll. So, yes, guys, LeBron James in the clutch. LeBron James being clutch. You know, on this channel, guys, I've told you many times that to me, LeBron James is not worthy of a top 10 spot in NBA's history. He has not been worthy of that spot. He has not earned it, right? He hasn't earned the respect. He's lost the respect. Man, I've told you guys, I would never put him in my top 10. I wouldn't. However, when we're talking about being clutch, that does not have anything to do with your overall rankings in NBA's history, right? There are players in NBA's history who are nowhere near considered a top 10 or a top 50 player in NBA's history, but people consider them very clutch. Someone like a Robert Ory, for example, right? No one thinks about Robert Ory as an all-time legend, but when it comes to clutch moments, right, stepping up when it matters, hitting a big shot, big shot Bob, Robert Ory, right, is considered one of the most clutch players in NBA's history, right? But when I say LeBron James is not one of the most clutch players in NBA's history, right? We're talking about the top five or, you know, the top three most clutch players in NBA's history. When I say that LeBron James is not on that level, I'm not saying that LeBron James is not clutch at all, right? I'm not saying that he never comes up big or he's never hit a, a big shot. I'm not saying that. And that's what we're not saying, right? We don't say those things. When we say LeBron James is not clutch, we're comparing him to Michael Jordan. And we're comparing him to the most clutch players in the history of the NBA. Remember, that's the standard that we're holding LeBron James to. That's the bar, right? So when we talk about these things, it's never that we're saying LeBron James is just not clutch, right? And, 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 and anybody, we're talking about the most clutch players in the history of the league. LeBron James is not with those guys. That's my, with my take, guys. I don't believe he's nowhere near the most clutch players in NBA's history. Now, when you think about clutch, a lot of people, they automatically assume that we're talking about a guy making a game-winning shot. And yes, that does show that a player is clutch, right? Stepping up and knocking down a shot when it matters most, right? The time is running down, right? Your team is down. They need that basket. Absolutely, that is considered to be a clutch play. However, being clutch has, is not just about making shots, right? It also has to do with your basketball IQ late in games, right? Your decision-making, right, in these clutch moments. Your leadership, right, in clutch moments. Your playmaking ability. All of this stuff factors into clutch moments. It's not just you making a shot. Right? Defense. You could be a clutch defensive player, right? And come up with a big time steal or a big time block. You know, whatever the case may be. Maybe you draw a charge against the other team, right? Maybe you draw a foul, right? On the offensive end, right? Someone gets a foul on you and you have to go to the free throw line late in games, right? That was a clutch play by you. You draw a foul against the defense late in the game. Those are all, you know, different ways that a player can be clutch, right, at the end of a game. To win, right, to impact winning. That's literally what clutch means is what it should be about. Your ability to impact winning at the highest level. Now, when we think about clutch players in NBA's history, we always know that Michael Jordan is usually considered the most clutch player in NBA's history, right? There's not even a debate, right? This is part of Michael Jordan. You know, when I talk to you guys about, 
you know, Vegas, right? You know, you often hear people say, well, Michael Jordan was always the favorite. He never lost because he was always the favorite, right? They'll say this as a knock on Michael Jordan, but really all that's doing is enhancing Michael Jordan's legacy because I've told you all that does is prove that Michael Jordan is known for being a clutch time performer. So people won't bet against Michael Jordan. Would you bet against Michael Jordan in the clutch? Would you bet against Michael Jordan in the finals? No, most people would not. Right? Neither would Vegas. Because Michael Jordan was always known for being a clutch time performer, a crunch time performer. Right? The Bulls are down late in the fourth quarter. Whatever it was, Michael Jordan is known for leading fourth quarter comebacks. That was part of his mystique. That's part of his legacy. This is what the man did. This is why teams feared Michael Jordan. Right? They knew if the game was close, late, Michael Jordan was going to make a play. He could win it on a shot, right? He could make a defensive play, right? His leadership was there. He was a great playmaker. His IQ was high. So Michael Jordan was known. He had all the ingredients, right, to close out games, right? We think about being a closer, right? If you're a closer, then that means you're known for being clutch, for coming up big when it matters most. That's Michael Jordan, guys, right? There's no discussion with LeBron James. No discussion there. But in this video, it's not about Michael Jordan or LeBron James being the most clutch performers because I don't believe that LeBron James is the top five most clutch performer in NBA's history. I would argue he's not top 10 most clutch performer in NBA's history. And the evidence is there, guys. Right? Many times we've talked about LeBron James folding up in the 2011 NBA Finals. Right? We point to the 2007 NBA Finals in his performance. Right, the turnovers, the poor shooting percentages, right? Just not having a well overall game, it hurts LeBron James in these moments. Right, there's been many times, 2015 NBA Finals, LeBron James was not great in the clutch moments. They were not. The, the scores were close in a lot of those games, and LeBron James folded up, right? Missing shots, taking bad shots, right? That's LeBron James, not being a defensive stopper, Right? That goes to your clutch play. It's not just about making baskets. Because oftentimes, I hear the LeBron fan club. They'll say LeBron James is the most clutch player in NBA's history. I've heard people say this. Right? With a straight face. And they'll say that LeBron James has the most playoff game winners in NBA's history. And yes, while that might be true, that does not show or tell you that LeBron James is the most clutch player in NBA's history because, once again, it comes down to more than just making shots, right? It's a combination of all these things. And when we look at LeBron James' career, right, in the NBA Finals, in the playoffs, there's been more times than not that LeBron James has underperformed. He's underachieved, right? Whether you're talking about the 2008 Eastern Conference semifinals against the Boston Celtics when LeBron James averaged like five turnovers a game, Right, he had one game with like 10 turnovers. He had poor shooting numbers. This is LeBron James. Right, not being really that clutch. They had a 2-1 lead, and they blew it. Lost three games in a row. How many times has LeBron James lost a 2-1 a lead in the playoffs, in the NBA Finals? Many times, guys. That's not really being clutch. We think about LeBron James in the 2009 Eastern Conference Finals against Orlando Magic. Where was LeBron James against Dwight Howard? He could not stop Hidu Turkoglu. Right, they'll tell us he can guard one through five, but he did not stop Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard dominated them. Dwight Howard, guys. LeBron James was not clutch in that playoff series. But one of his most clutch shots came in that series. Right? I believe the Cavaliers were down 1-0 or something like that, or 2-0, and LeBron James hits that fadeaway three, which we all know was luck. The man was just threw up a prayer, and it went in. That's one of the most clutch shots in LeBron James' career, in a series that he lost. Think about that. So when his fans talk about his playoff game winners, it doesn't really matter, because where are those shots in the finals when it mattered most? Those shots are not there. Right, so it doesn't hold the same amount of weight as a Michael Jordan, for example, who's hit several game winners in playoffs and hit several game winners in the NBA Finals, guys, several. Michael Jordan in the 1997 Finals alone hit two game winners, guys. 
He hit the game winner in game one with zero time on the clock. And then in the flu game, he hit the game winning three with a couple of seconds left. It was essentially the game winner. Not to mention the game winning assist to Steve Kerr in that same finals. He had three game winning plays in that finals. Just in that one finals, guys. We won't talk about the 1991 NBA Finals Game 3 that I'm always telling you guys about, right? The series tied one game apiece in L.A. Bulls are down by two, right? There's about 11 seconds left or whatever it was on the clock. Scottie Pippen fouled out. Michael joins a drive down the court, hit the game tie and shot to send it to overtime, and then carry the Bulls to an OT win with Scottie Pippen fouled out on the bench. Shutting Magic Johnson down, right? Playing defense. That's Michael Jordan in the clutch. Right, we think about the 1998 NBA Finals, Game 6. It's not just about the shot. I've always told you guys. It wasn't just a shot that was impressive to me. It was the sequence of plays leading up to the shot that shows how clutch Michael Jordan is on both sides, both ends of the court. Right, Michael Jordan gets a quick two-for-one layup, and then he has the game-winning steal. Right? I told you he baited John Stockton, one of the greatest assist men in NBA's history. He baits him into making a pass, then strips Carl Malone the ball before making the shot. That's Michael Jordan on both ends. Both ends. I've never seen LeBron James do that. Yeah, he might have had the block in the 2016 finals, but did he hit the game winner also? No, that was Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving made that shot. Gets no credit. So, yes, as we said, LeBron James has been clutch in his career. He just has, has not been one of the most clutch players in his career, in NBA's history. He has not. You know, I've seen some articles, right? And I've seen them have LeBron James third all-time on the clutch list of most clutch players in NBA's history. Third above guys like Kobe Bryant, above guys like Larry Bird, above guys like Jerry West above guys like Sam Jones. I can't see that. I don't buy it. So for me, guys, LeBron James is not a top five, you know, clutch player in NBA's history. I can't put him up there. Like I said, he may not even be top 10 if I really thought about a list because there's been too many times where LeBron James has failed, has folded up because once again, this is not about making shots. We think about Larry Bird in the 1987 Eastern Conference Finals against the Detroit Pistons. The series tied two games apiece. The Celtics are down by one point in game five. What does Larry Bird proceed to do? Steals the inbound pass from Isaiah Thomas. Shout out to Isaiah Thomas. Always got something to say. Steals the inbound pass and then keeps himself inbounds, right, and makes a nice pass to Dennis Johnson for the game-winning layup in the closing seconds. That's Larry Bird. That's being clutch. It wasn't about Larry Bird making a shot. He made a clutch play, a defensive play at that, and then made the game-winning assist all in the same play, guys. That's Larry Bird. LeBron James ain't doing that. He's never done that. Never. So for me, Larry Bird is a much more clutch performer than LeBron James. If I need a basket, I'm going with Larry Bird over LeBron James. Basketball IQ, I'm going with Larry Bird over LeBron James. Just smarter making plays. Because I've told you, the problem for LeBron James in a lot of these closeout moments, not just about making shots, is that he's never had a go-to move or a well-rounded offensive game. So he's scared to go to the free throw line sometimes in these games, right, which changes his mindset. Sometimes he makes bad passes, right, bad decisions late in games. And then they'll say what? Oh, LeBron James made the right play. He did not make a winning play. The winning play. I don't want to hear about the right play. What does that even mean? That Only for LeBron James is that line used. The right play. It's not a winning play. So late in games, LeBron James will fumble the ball. He'll turn it over late in games. Right? He's a turnover machine. This is LeBron James, guys. So not having a go-to move, it hurts LeBron James in the clutch shots which is why he's never made a game winner in the NBA Finals. He's never had a go-to move. He's never worked on a mid-range game or a post-up game or had spots on the court where he could go to to get a basket. He never had these things. So late games, LeBron James looks lost out there. 
also being clutch has to do with your leadership. Right? Michael Jordan's a much greater leader in the clutch, always galvanizing his teammates when it mattered most, giving them the confidence so John Paxson can make a shot in 93, so Steve Kerr could be there for him in 97. Right, guys like Ron Harper stepping up, guys like Luke Longley and Tony Kukoc and B.J. Armstrong, Chorus Grant, Scotty Pippen, right? All these guys stepping up from time to time because Michael Jordan pushed them in practice. He held them to a standard. That's his leadership. That goes to being clutch. How does that go to being clutch, Robin? Well, let me explain this to you. We think about LeBron James' leadership or lack of. Let's think about the 2018 NBA Finals, guys. Where was his leadership in game one going into overtime after J.R. Smith had the blunder? Where was LeBron James' leadership to galvanize his teammates to get these guys prepared for the overtime? In the finals, he was pouting on the bench like a baby. Acting the game was over already. That's not being clutch. That's not being clutch with your leadership. That matters, guys. Larry Bird ain't doing that. Kobe Bryant? No. He's getting everybody ready. He's galvanizing them. Right? He's holding them accountable. So they're prepared. Magic Johnson? Stepping up in 1980 when Kareem Abdul-Jabbar went down as a rookie? And it wasn't just about the 42 points that Magic Johnson put up in that finals performance. The man had, what, 12, 13 rebounds or whatever it was. So he filled the void that Kareem left by scoring and rebounding. That's Magic Johnson. That's coming up clutch. Not just scoring, but doing what the team needed. Matt Johnson's much more clutch than LeBron James. His basketball IQ, his leadership, his playmaking ability. That's why the man won so much. Kobe Bryant's more clutch than LeBron James. That's not even a discussion. But yet, they'll tell you that LeBron James is more clutch than Kobe Bryant because he made more playoff game winners. Once again, they've lowered the bar for LeBron James right down to just playoffs. They don't want to talk about the finals. Kobe Bryant still more won, won more than LeBron James. If you need a shot at the end of a game, are you picking LeBron over Kobe? No. When you want someone to have the ball in their hands just for overall playmaking or to not turn it over, right, or to make a good play, I'm going with Kobe Bryant over LeBron James. He don't have the leadership of Kobe Bryant. The basketball IQ of Kobe Bryant, I'm not buying it. At least Kobe Bryant wasn't afraid of the moment, so he knew what to do. Whether it was going to go in or not doesn't matter. It's about not having the fear. Kobe Bryant wasn't afraid of the free throw line. He wasn't afraid of the moments. Oftentimes, LeBron James has looked afraid of the moment. He's been afraid. 2011, where was he? 2015, where was he? 2014, where was he? Right? How many 2 1 leads? In 2015, the Cavs were up two games to one. And they proceeded to lose three games in a row. Go look at LeBron James' fourth quarter performances in that finals. It was terrible. Missing shots left and right. Couldn't stop Andre Iguodala. That's being clutch. Right, you guys remember, Havlicek stole the ball. Havlicek stole the ball. That was a clutch play by John Havlicek. Coming up with defensive play. Bill Russell, coming up big in the game sevens. Sam Jones, Jerry West. These guys are known for being clutch, for coming up big when it mattered most. Making big time plays. Saving the ball from going out of bounds. Having a steal, being a leader, leading your team, Bill Russell, Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, Jerry West, they led their teams. Reggie Miller, these are clutch time performers, man. LeBron James is on that level. Give me Michael Jordan, give me Kobe, give me Jerry West, give me Bill Russell. Give me Magic Johnson. Give me Larry Bird. Give me Sam Jones. Give me Reggie Miller. Give me these guys in the clutch. 
Give me these guys late in games. I'll put the ball in their hands before I want the ball in LeBron James' hands. And once again, I'm not saying that LeBron James is not clutch. Right? Once again, I'm not comparing him to Scottie Pippen in the clutch. I'm not comparing him to a lesser player. We're comparing him against the other all-time greats, the other most clutch players in NBA's history, the guys that were proven, that did it. There's no narratives around their careers. They actually did these things. They were not afraid of the moment. They had leadership, right? They galvanized the teammates. They had high IQs late in games. They didn't fumble the ball around. LeBron James is always being touted as having this high basketball IQ. But yet, at the end of games, right, he seems to not make the right plays. But they'll tell us he's making the right play. But why do his teams lose so much then? When it matters most, his teams will fold up because LeBron James will fold up and turn the ball over or miss the shot, take a bad shot. Look at LeBron James' shot selection, guys, at the end of games. And compared to a Michael Jordan, it's not even close. Michael Jordan knows where he's going, knows what he's going to do. LeBron James is not. He's unsure of himself. And he's never been clutch on the defensive end. They'll always talk about that one chase down block. But it was J.R. Smith that actually helped him make that play. The same J.R. Smith that LeBron James scapegoated. His fans never talk about J.R. Smith coming down and hustling back to make an Andre Iguodala adjust his layup to allow LeBron James to block that shot. But once again, LeBron James came with that block. But during the last two minutes of that fourth quarter, where was LeBron James? He was 0 for 4 from the field, scored one point that he got from the free throw line when the, the Cavs are already up. It was Kyrie Irving. They had to make the game winning basket while LeBron James stayed in the corner because he couldn't score in the last four minutes or the last two minutes of the fourth quarter. So once again, LeBron James was not as clutch as Kyrie Irving was. Kyrie Irving was leading the Cavaliers in fourth quarter scoring. So yes, guys, I don't know. I know this video went kind of long. I don't see how LeBron James can be a top clutch performer in NBA's history. Like I said, I don't know if he's top 10. He's definitely not top five. I told you, I'll take Jordan. I'll take Kobe, Bird, Magic, Bill Russell. You know, I'll take Jerry West. I'll take Sam Jones. I'll take Reggie Miller. I mean, it's off the top of my head. That's what, eight, nine guys? I don't even know what that is. So I don't know if I could put LeBron James in the top 10 all-time most clutch performers in NBA's history. And once again, I'm not saying Reggie Miller is greater than LeBron James. We're talking about clutch performances. When it matters most, Reggie Miller is known for being that guy. Those other guys I mentioned, Sam Jones, I'm not saying Sam Jones is a greater player than LeBron James, but he was known for being, he was actually the Mr. Clutch before Jerry West was. Bill Russell? I mean, speaks for itself. It's Bill Russell, man. Michael Jordan, there's no debate. Kobe, there should be no debate here. Jerry West, there should be no debate. Maybe you guys have other people in mind. Maybe you think I'm crazy. But to me, LeBron James is not one of the most clutch performers in NBA's history. Yes, he's been clutch at moments, but he's not one of the most clutch. You guys know the deal, man. I'll catch you guys on the next one.